Welcome to Salon Talks. I am Mary Elizabeth Williams, and this actor and producer and Emmy nominee is Kate Mara. You know her, of course, from television shows like House of Cards, American Horror Story, The Teacher. You know her from movies like Fantastic Four, Chappaquiddick, all kinds of, like, I can't go into everything right now, <laughs> but now she's in a new show. It is a very timely thriller on FX, and it's called Class of 09. Hi, how Hi, are you? good. So let's, let's start in 09. The show takes place over three different time periods, but when we get to know your character in her first incarnation, tell me a little bit about Poet. Well, uh, when you f well when you first meet our characters in 09, I should say we are all um, at Quantico, so we're, we're um, you know having to go through all the steps that one does in order to become an FBI agent. Um, that to me, when I was reading the scripts and also just in general, like I think that's a really interesting um, thing that uh, people go through. Um, I love that aspect of, um, you know, learning about, um, you know, the, the, the real FBI agents and like the, the training they go through and all the tests and um, you know, there's so many things that I wasn't aware of that they actually have to, to do and learn. Um, so Poet is one of those students and, you know, everybody sort of excels in different ways at that point in, um, in their lives and uh, she was a nurse before she was recruited to, um, you know, at attempt to become an agent. Um, so that's sort of where we meet her. Yeah, and she's, I like that it's also about these characters who have had pasts and have had lives and then are coming into this moment in their lives where mm. they want to do something different. And the show, especially the part in the future, couldn't be more apt for the moment we're living in right now because so much of it is about AI and surveillance. Things have changed so much probably just in the time since you were working on this show. Yeah. What did you know about AI before you came into this and has it changed your understanding of what's going on in the world around us now? Um, I d d didn't really know much about it. I mean, obviously, the story that we tell is um, not true, um, but clearly it sort of feels like a cautionary tale in a lot of ways, you know, um, what happens to human beings and, and our world if we are um, you know, if we do let uh, AI and technology take over um, in a lot of ways, and um, obviously there's a lot that's happening now in our world. Uh, we, sh we filmed the show a year ago, and yeah, it, feels, it does feel like a lot of these themes are very relevant, which is pretty scary. Um, it's not something that I um, really was um, paying a lot of atten a lot of attention to, um, you know, in, in my regular life, um, it freaks me out, and now I think it's even more concerning. Um, but again, yeah, that was that was uh, the idea was sort of what would happen if AI uh, took over um, in the future, anyway, uh, our law enforcement, and how would that affect us all? Yeah, and it's, um, it's crazy because the, the future part takes place 12 years in the future, and now it's one year in the future from when yeah. you filmed it, and it already feels so much closer mm -hmm. than ever. Um, but I also like that 12, year in the, 12 years in the future, at least menswear has really stepped up a little. I'm like <laughs> waiting for that moment for right. menswear to really change right. in a way that I'm like, yeah. You like this. The, I the love the suiting. Suits, right. I love, I love 12. That's I'm, a shout out to David Tabert, our uh, great costume designer. I'm excited <laughs> for 12 years in the future when men's suiting has gone yeah. in that direction. And you, you of course, look amazing and have, have a mechanical eye. Like, you're, the future is, is different for you. <laughs> Let's talk about the way that this show takes place over these three different timelines. And I want to know, it's, so it's obviously 2009, the present day, and then 2034. They were always pretty vague about the time the future of the future. Yeah. Um, was there a time period that you most liked doing? Yeah. Well, I, I, I definitely preferred um, the present and the past. The future was hard with the, um, with the prosthetics and uh, because we, we did, with the older age, um, makeup and everything, there was prosthetic work um, that took a while to perfect as it always does. Um, 
and it was just a longer amount of time in the hair and makeup chairs. Um, and then also just the, the themes of the future episodes or the future scenes, I should say, are um, more complicated. And um, yeah, so I, 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 I enjoyed the, the past. Um, like I said before, I'm, I'm interested in um, the Quantico aspect of it. And it's fun to play a character who's sort of more um, naive and hopeful you know, and then and then the present day, I also enjoyed because she is undercover um, as a police officer. So there's a lot of other there's a lot of layers there um, to to play with. Yeah, and it's um, it's fun watching the way that these characters change and the ways in which they also stay so true to themselves yeah. throughout. I want to ask how you did that. I mean, the, the look of those different time periods and eras is very clear, I think, for the viewer, but I'm interested in how you as a cast and collaborators work to keep that kind of consistency and change. Mm. Um, well, a lot of it is, a lot of it is in the scripts as is, so you can't really take that much credit for it, but, um, you know, there, there are obvious um, characteristics and themes for each character, I think, um, when reading it, even in, you know, the first episode I read. I mean, Poet was, um, the character that I play is very, she romanticizes her career and her career is sort of um, her everything. And that stays really true um, for the past, present, and future. It complicates her life, her her friendships, her love life, and all of that stuff. Um, but I think that that is definitely something that sort of stays with her um, for a lot of her life, you know, no matter what time period that she's, she's in. Yeah, it's an interesting concept to think about, like looking at, looking at your past, We're all, we all do it all the time, right? We look at our past selves, we look at our yeah. future selves. So I wanna know, take me back to 2009, Kate. You're looking at your life from from mm -hmm. that point of view. Like, who is she, and how does she relate with this person? Like, do you think she knew what she wanted? Was she going in the direction that you've gone in? When you look at that person from 13 years ago, who do you see? Well, I have never really been today, even now. Um, probably especially now because I have kids, um, and they really do keep you present because there's uh, not a lot of time to think about, um, you know, 10 years from now um, or 10 years before. Um, but yeah, my life was very different 13 years ago, mainly because I wasn't a mom yet. And, um, but, uh, I, you know, I've been acting. I've, the one constant for sure that I know um, that hasn't changed and I feel really grateful for it has always been my passion for my job. You know, I was lucky because I knew from the age of nine that I wanted to be an actor and that, you know, I, I haven't gotten at all um, jaded by it or, you know, like the magic is still very much there for me um, when I get to do what I love. So I feel really lucky in that. That feels um, still really obvious to me that that's what I want to be doing. You asked your mom to help you find an agent when you were nine? <laughs> yeah, I did. She laughed and she said I don't don't know how to do that honey but um, but then she started sort of asking around um, you know because I was in sort of like the community theater and their community uh, like theater arts programs and things like that and so I think once she once she recognized that I was really serious about it and very ambitious about it she kind of started talking to the other moms and there was another another girl who was already doing Broadway at nine she was in Les Mis which was one of my favorite shows. And her mom gave us the address of um, an agency and said, you should just send, just send her picture and a, and a cassette tape of her singing a jingle, because I was sort of a singer back when I was a kid. And you know her resume, which my resume was consisted of, I don't know, a few community theater plays, like that was it. And so we sent it in and, and we got a call back saying we'd love to meet you. So that's kind of how it happened, which is, which is funny, so funny to me now, you know, in the world of, um, in the age of no one really sends mail anymore. 
um, like physical mail, it's all emails, that, that just wasn't a thing. Um, but yeah, it, was, it felt very much like it was meant to be. Yeah, I saw your um, Super Bowl ad from 1998 where people were sending faxes yeah. and talking on telephone. I mean, I remember that very clearly, those days of getting a fax, you know. I think there's something really amazing to be said about um, the younger versions of ourselves. Um, and, and certainly in, in the show as well. The, my character, I think, is quite um, fearless um, when she's trying to get through Quantico and, you know, taking a lot of risks. And um, I guess it's because when we're younger, there's a lot of, you, you know, you're trying to prove yourself, um, trying to find your way. And I definitely think that, um, that I, I, de I try and remember what that feels like or what that felt like when I was a kid. And, you know, the embarrassment of our, our jobs can be pretty embarrassing. We have to do some really ridiculous things. But, but I think a lot of that is one of the reasons why I love it is because you really have to let your guard down and you just have to go for it and, and embarrass yourself in order to find, you know, these stories that we tell and the characters that we try and create. Um, and and I, I think it's really amazing when people can be less self-conscious and, you know, um, sort of in, in our heads about things. And yeah. when, when we're younger, I think it's easier to, to do that. Yeah, to get out of your head. Because yeah. you haven't, you just haven't had as many, you haven't racked up as many embarrassments, <laughs> exactly. maybe, is the thing. And I mean, I love when you talk about being vulnerable like that and getting over that embarrassment, because you have done such interesting roles. I always feel like when I see your name in something, it's going to be interesting and the character is going to be interesting. And I'm not going to know who she is when, oh, I, first, well, thank when you. I first meet her. Right. You play these very morally complicated women. You play people who we don't know what's going on with them. What is it that you're looking for when you're looking for parts? And is this now something where in your career people say, like, oh, this, this person, she's, that's mm. a Kate Mara type? Um, I don't know if people say that. Um, well, hopefully not, because I think one of the goals is to not be a type, not to have a specific type. You know, it's it's much more fun to play all different kinds of roles. But um, you know, uh, it it depends. Like, I, it's it's it depends on where I am or where I think anyone is in their lives or careers. Like, you know, sometimes you just need a job because you haven't worked in a while and you've got <laughs> kids to feed, or or you're antsy and just need that creative outlet, or you are looking for something really specific. Um, or if you've had, you know, an experience that wasn't so good and you wanna, you know, like a palate cleanser and so you're just looking for something really creatively fulfilling. You know, it's, it's, I feel like it, it really does shift with um, life, you know, and, and where I am in, in, in the, the world. Um, but but I do try, you know, the, the, the goal for me has always been to, to try and play different characters. But that, you know, that doesn't always happen. Okay, but you have been in a lot of dark things. You've yeah. been in some pretty dark stuff, Kate. And you've played some kind of dark characters. Have there been, has there been a character that has kind of stuck with you that was kind of hard to leave behind at the end of the day? Or just a, a film or a show that you felt like, ooh, that's kind of hard to shake off? It depends. I, playing, I think, playing real people. You know, I've, I've done that a few times where you play um, where it's a true story or based on a true story, and I think those are particularly um, hard to forget or they stay with you. I think longer because. Um, so like Chappaquiddick. Yeah, I mean that was brutal. That that for sure. But um, Meg, I did a movie called Megan Levy, and. Um, that character definitely stayed with me in a lot of ways because I met the real Megan Levy and I, we spent a lot of time together and she is inspiring. Um, and also my experience with the dog specifically was really um, amazing. So, so those types of things, yeah. But I don't usually have that much of a hard time. I think again, because of my home life, <laughs> because of what's happening there, um, I don't usually have a hard time um, like, you know, shaking off um, the day's work. It's like once I get home, there's too many people there who <laughs> don't care about what you were just doing the last 13 hours. Um, and I think that's helpful. 
It is. You it's, know? It's, uh, it's great. <laughs> Kids don't, they just don't care. They don't care. They don't care. <laughs> no. Um, you've also died a couple of times in, yeah. in your career. You get to die a lot. What's the secret? Is there a secret to dying well? Have you learned over the years how to die well? Um, no, it's particularly hard to hold your breath when you know the camera's on you. Um, the hardest one was, you mentioned Chappaquiddick, and I, there was a, there's a scene in the movie where I'm in the water and the water was freezing cold. We filmed it in Mexico and, um, and it was the winter time, and it was freezing. And I, they had to pull me out of the water and I was obviously meant to not be shivering or moving and that was an interesting test. Okay. But <laughs> I have no secrets. I, we just did it a bunch of times and somehow it worked, but yeah. um, really hard. You can't control that. All right, I have to ask you one more thing because you, you are such a busy lady right now. You're also in the upcoming season of Black Mirror. I want to know, I know people can never say much. <laughs> can you say anything? I mean, I can, all I can say is my, the experience that I had on it was one of the best experiences I've had making something. It, it was sh very short. It was a very quick shoot. Um, I was also six months pregnant when I filmed it, and I wasn't meant to be pregnant. Um, so that was kind of special because there was, you know, my now son was there in every scene. <laughs> um, and it's, yeah. I'm sure, as you can see in the trailer, it's none of those um, episodes are particularly light. Um, so, but it was a very magical experience, and I absolutely loved my director, John Crowley. He was just a dream to work with. Um, anyway, yeah, I love. I've always loved Black Mirror, so it was fun to be a part of that. Excellent. But in the meantime, we can enjoy you on Class of 09, seeing you in all your, in seeing, seeing you triple, <laughs> in triple, including once with, an, with a mechanical eye. Kate Mara, thank you so much for joining me today. It's an absolute pleasure. You can watch the show on FX right now. Thank you for having me.